A big part of a startup founder's job is fundraising. It's one of the most difficult things to do. This video is a real example of a founder pitching investors and receiving feedback at a recent event from Pitchforce. I'm Mark Baldino with Firebot Suppression, and we've been at this three and a half years. We have been awarded a US patent uh, for our device. Uh, Let's see. Okay, there. Uh, every year, U.S. fire departments respond to an average of 172,000 home fires per year. Uh, a million of them are self-extinguished. They start in the homes, people put it out themselves. So it's a big problem, big safety problem. Uh, your ranges or cooktops account for three out of every five home fires in, uh, uh, that, that are reported. Uh, does $1.2 billion a year in damage. Uh, and it's a leading cause of fires in the homes. Uh, you, you have another flip side, $1.5 billion to damage for the fire department's responses and annual injury claims. Uh, there's one of our units. This is the recess unit. It mounts up in the range so you don't see it. I'm just gonna play the video for you because that's really what we do. When it hits 175 degrees, activate, sprays out the precedent, puts out the fire. Okay, and we had that tested. That's a, one of the videos we had when we were doing our UL test up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and we passed. So we're on our way to get UL certification. Uh, we, we prevent any damage to the range hood to the stovetop before the fire even blisters the range hood. Uh, we use the thermal sensor to detect it. We build into the circuitry of false alarm prevention. So if you get a flare up because you're doing some fa fancy French cooking, uh, it has to read 175 for two or three seconds before it activates. Uh, we've talked to many insurance companies, they'll give a premium discount. And the reason that a lot of the fire, uh, uh, apartment and condominium management companies want us is they're deductible because they're responsible for up to fifty to hundred thousand dollars if they do have a stovetop fire. Uh, direct sales and distribution, and that would be straight to apartment management companies. That's thirty million units, easy sales. We can talk to one person, sell four thousand units. In fact, we've gone out and got eighty-eight thousand pre-orders. Uh, we can do license agreement, licensing agreements with, uh, sto with uh, uh, range hood manufacturers or microwave manufacturers to build our unit into their uh, existing devices. The market's huge. It's just in the U.S. alone, there's 139 million homes. We'd like to install one firebot in every one. Uh, even if we get 10%, that's a huge, huge market. So we have our multifamily construction companies, we have, we have uh, uh, assisted living, we have restoration companies, which is our go-to backup plan. They repair 172,000 fires a year. You think on the way out, they can say, ma'am, thanks for your $30,000 for 170 we can put in this device. You never have to worry about a stovetop fire again. Uh, we have also vacation rental properties and the kitchen appliance manufacturers. Uh, marketing strategy, I just talked to you about a, a little bit about that, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide, but we have a good push from insurance companies, fire departments, uh, your fire marshals who want to build it into to, uh, safety code, there's 30,000 uh, <laughs> um, um, counties in the country, so if we could just even sell one per county, of the fire marshal, that's great. Uh, we have direct you're, sales. Mark, Mark, you're out of time. Okay, you're out that's of time. fine. What yeah. you didn't cover, which I'm going to ask you now, is what the deal is for investors and how well, we're going to make money. WIIFM, please tell us. Okay, well, we are going to get a bunch of sales. That's not a question. It's not that's even not my question. My okay. question to you. You is how okay. am I? We're, we're looking for $250,000 right now today. That's 2% of the company. Uh, will we need 2 million? Yeah. Do the math, do the math for me. What's what that, what does that make the pre-money? Um, 
I'm, I'm sorry, the the pre money, money would be what 50 times uh, 250. Oh, is it well, well, based on what, what we call what, what we're saying, we have 88,000 pre sold. If we do sell those, value of the company would be worth about 15 million. Okay. You're not asking uh, me to invest. You're not asking me to invest 250 million dollars at a pre money. No, no, two, two, two hundred twenty, two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand will buy will buy me two percent of the company. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Okay. okay. All right. And that's somebody what. We're, somebody do the math for me on that one. What does that make the pre money? Fifty times two hundred fifty thousand. Is that right? Twelve and a half million. Twelve and a half million. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. And, Carla, and that. Yeah. And all right. That, and that's, and then, that's then my, that. Mark, Mark, Mark. I had two simple questions. One is what's the pre money. The second is how and when will we make money? When I asked you that question before, you started telling me how you're going to make money. Think of us, the catchers. What's in it for us? When are right. you going? To, when are you going to add, how well, how are we going to make money? Okay, we're. The, the way we'll all make money is when we start selling firebots. So we expect that to occur in about three months. Okay. You're going to make, it's going to cost us 60 to $70. No, 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 no. Let, 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 let me let some other people ask questions. Cause you're not, okay. you're not, you're not, you're not getting where I'm coming from, which is no. our point number five. You're, you're selling something. You're selling us a percentage of your business. When are we going to make money? Are you going to exit? How are you going to exit? That's the question. Well, I think it's a little premature to talk about that. Okay. Other questions from the panel? <laughs> yeah. So one question I have is, uh, tell me about what it means for someone to have pre-ordered. Did they give you, you know, $100 up front or what does that mean? What type of commitment? Before we, we, we even got started, we said, well, this is a great idea. Does anybody really need it? So we went around to about 10 uh, apartment management companies, just basically knocked on the door, went in, asked them, is this a device you'll need? Uh, one company said, yeah, we'll take it. I said, well, I haven't even finished. And they said, no, no. We had a fire three years ago, did, did 10 million in damage, killed three people. We're going to take 4,000, put them in every one of our units. So we did that. So we got to about 88,000. And I said to uh, uh, <laughs> Paul, I said, all right, that's enough. We, 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 we know it's going to be a, a winner. We know people need it. So we went on and developed the product up. That's so right. it, it, uh, I'm not sure I got an answer to the question. What commitment do you have from these people? Had, Did we give you we a credit time, card? At, 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 no, no, no. We, we weren't there. We couldn't do that because we didn't really have a product in the box or ready for them to purchase with a down payment. So you have 88,000 people who said, had, I like it. I would buy it if you built it. signatures that they said, yeah, when you get it ready, we'll buy. Is that a PO? No. Okay. But it's pretty darn close. Yeah. So, um, Mark, I love after this, after hearing your detailed pitch, I love the concept, the idea. I think you have a lot of potential. Um, I would like to see number one. Um, I think you would benefit a lot from getting a coach. Okay. Um, especially in terms of communication. Okay. You're shaking your head. All right. All right. Um, well, that, that, that tells you all you need to know. That's not good. That's not good. Shaking your head. No. When you got a really bright guy telling you, you need a coach. <laughs> All right. And let me give you an example. Um, um, <clears throat> Max was trying to uh, uh, help you to draw an answer out and you didn't answer his question. OK. And he got a little frustrated. OK. Um, the other thing I would say is that be careful of overselling. You said you have 88,000 pre-orders and I tried to understand what that is. Um, you actually don't have a pre-order. You have an interest list that's different. OK, then I heard I wrote it down. I thought I heard you say you have a UL approved device. And then in the in, in the first session and then here you said you're working on getting UL certification. So be careful of overselling. OK, the, the final thing is that um, what you're describing, I think, can be a very successful business. But the way you've presented it makes it non investable. OK, uh, the fact that you can't explain how an investor would make money is a concern. And I think that's why if you got a good pitch coach, you would, it would, that person can help you one, communicate more clearly and two, understand what the people in this room are looking for. Because I think you have a potentially very viable business, 
But right now, with the way you've described it, it's kind of uninvestable to me. Sometimes it's difficult for a pitch judge to provide all the constructive feedback that comes to mind. But in this situation, I was trying to focus on two things, listening and overselling. Listening is a very important sales skill. This is key because when you are fundraising, you are trying to sell your stock to potential investors. The slide on the importance of listening is from my class on how to sell and fundraise effectively. The other thing I was trying to communicate was the importance of not overselling. I talk about the perils of overselling, especially with investors, in my startup fundraising from founders, friends, and family class. In this instance, the founders said they had 88,000 pre-orders, which is a phenomenal achievement. I'm not a very active investor, but I was ready to get out my checkbook right then and there. But I knew I needed clarification on what he considers a pre-order. To me, a pre-order is like when Tesla was about to release their Model 3 sedan. Customers could pay $1,000 for a place in line to buy the car. When the customer commits cold, hard cash, that is a pre-order. This startup did not have that. They had an interest list. That's still good, but that's not a pre-order. This mistake is more than just choice of words. If your audience feels like you are overselling in one area, they start to doubt your claims in other parts of your pitch. You basically lose credibility. To summarize, fundraising is selling. Founders need to learn how to sell. Sadly, most people don't value sales skills, which is why the Dean of Harvard Business School reports that the number one skill their MBA alumni wish they could have learned was sales. This is underscored in the quote from two Harvard instructors that the ability to sell is the single most critical success factor of any new enterprise. When was the last time you heard that in a startup training? So, if you want to beef up your sales skills, take a look at our How to Sell and Fundraise Effectively class. You can find a link directly to this class and to the Fundraising from Founders, Friends, and Family class in the video description below. If you want to participate in Pitchforce, check out the link in the description. There's also a link to our website if you want to learn more about my services as a startup coach or the online training I've built to help founders build a healthy, fundable startup. Building a successful startup is hard. You don't have to do it without help. Check out our resources and you'll get that help.